right, next up, what we've all been waiting for, our product showcase, starring Mirko Schupp and Stefan Schmidt. So they have about 57 slides, isn't it, with two minutes apiece or so? All right, very good. So product showcase, come on, guys. <laughs> Hi, everyone. So, yeah, welcome to the product showcase at DocuWorld 2017. Let me introduce my colleague, Stefan Schmidt. Um, he will introduce me, uh, he will support me during the, the demo. Uh, my name is Mirko Schöpf. Um, we are both uh, part of the product department. And together, we will show you some of the highlights of DocuWare version 6.11 today. DocuWare version 6.11 covers even more user needs, you will see. All of the effort we have spent in the new version was driven by the motivation to make our users, our users' lives easier and make their daily work with DocuWare more efficient. We want, to show, we want to show you some of the improvements, so let's get right in. So let's switch to the... The first thing we actually want to show you is um, an employee inboarding process. So you know our demo company, Peters Engineering, and we want to take you through this typical, through a typical onboarding process at Peters Engineering. So now let's switch to the demo. First of all, Simon Stone logs in to DocuWare. Simon is the head of HR at Peters Engineering. He wants that job applications to be collected in a new central document tray so that applications which come in on paper um, or via email are collected in that document tray and that all fellow employees of his are able to view and work with these applications collected there. So let's go to the DocuWare configuration. And there, choose the document trays and add a new document tray. So let's give it a name. Choose a different color maybe. Choose the file cabinet which is related to that uh, document tray. And assign it to the role HR so that everyone who's part of that role can view the documents in the tray. So that's it. Simon has just created a central secure place for all incoming job applications. The tray can now be filled with ver from various sources, e.g. from emails, coming from Outlook, uh, with scanned documents, or directly from the file system. The main benefit of this new configuration is that everyone can now easily create new document trays for their own usage or shared ones for collaborating with other members of the department of an organization. This now works on any browser. The users do not have to care about any technical details and the configuration is really easy to learn. It follows the same interaction principles you already know from other parts of the configuration. So there is no additional learning. So the hurdle to do this is really low. So now several applications came in, came in and were checked by Simon Stone and his colleagues. There was one application, it was the application of Tiffany Scott which, which was really outstanding. We skipped the interview and the salary, the salary negotiations, they have taken place. And Simon now prepared the employee contract for Tiffany and he wants to send that contract out to Tiffany. But actually before sending it out, it needs to be approved by at least one fellow 
employee of the sales department. Tiffany will be part of the sales department later on. So let's first go to the web client and first of all store the new contract for Tiffany Scott. So we choose the contract and we enter the department, which in this case is sales department. Her last name is Scott and the first name is Tiffany. And as document type, we choose employee agreement and we store the document. And now we navigate to the, so we have a new employee record, Scott. We navigate to that document we just stored. And as I mentioned before, Simon needs the approval of at least one person from the sales department. So you can easily do this by choosing send request from the context menu of the document. So right click, context menu opens and choose send request. Now he chooses um, to which users he wants to send them. So he chooses, um, that's Peter Sanders and Fred Winner. These are the two colleagues from the sales department, presses OK. Then he changes the subject. Yeah, Stefan is a real machine when it comes to fast typing. Um, and we, now what we notice is just bef besides Sanders, there is a small icon which notifies the user that Peter Sanders is, is not in the office for quite some time, so it doesn't make really sense to send him this request. So we just take him out here again. And then we press OK. And the request is sent. Now we switch to the overview in, of the tasks. So here we see this open task now in a list. An advantage of this overview is that you never lose track over your requests. It is instantly clear to who you have sent which request. Imagine doing the same with emails. It's very hard to keep track of different statuses here. So let's forward a little bit in the process. Fred has approved Simon request, Simon's request and Simon sent the contract to Tiffany and she signed it and returned it. So from contract side of view, Everything is there. But there are more documents which need to be created during the onboarding process. So Simon, in addition to the contract, needs an employee fact sheet to be filled out by Tiffany. And in addition, Tiffany will, will use the company cars. So she, she needs to sign another agreement about the usage of the company cars. So both need to be filled out by Tiffany. So let's go to forms because Simon has been using document forms for the employee fact sheet up to now. Um, but Simon discovered some new exciting feature in document forms. So let's navigate to the forms configuration. and choose the employee info form for editing. Now he, choose, he changes the form configuration in a way that not only the fact sheet, but also the company car agreement will be generated out of one form. So we drag this 
attach file because this enables Tiffany later on to actually attach a copy of the driver's license. We give the field a label, an idea, ID, and then we switch to the merge forms. And here we deselect driver's license. Because this attachment is only needed for the company car agreement, but not for the employee fact sheet. So now let's close the form, save it. And leave the form configuration. and switch to Outlook. Then we open the drafts folder. There's already an email prepared. And we send out this email with a link to the form which we have just changed out to Tiffany Scott. So now let's switch to Tiffany. I'll just share my screen here from iPad. So Tiffany is really happy about her new job. And she checks her emails at home on the couch on the iPad. She received this mail from Simon Stone. And it contains a link to the web form. So let's just open it. Just for, so this is the form. For demo reasons, I have already filled it out a little bit. And so all I need to do is give a driver's license number, tap on this control to choose an external file. And what I will do is I'll just scan the driver's license of Tiffany. I say use photo, and then this needs to be signed. And submitted. Back at Peter's Engineering, and back with Simon Stone. So now Simon browses Tiffany's employee record. And he finds two new documents. It's the employee fact sheet. There it is. And the second is the company car agreement. And let's navigate to the attachment. And there you go. There is her driver's license. So the possibility to generate multiple documents out of the same form data and dynamically add attachments to them extends the flexibility of DocuWare forms massively. And even more business processes can be covered. As in our example, and what we just showed you, the driver's license makes only sense for the carpool agreement, but not really for the employee fact sheet. So Simon has successfully managed the onboarding process with Tiffany Scott. But he has some more issue, issues on his to-do list, which he has been wanting to do for a long time. So, for instance, he wants to notify employees about new pay slips, which are stored in DocuWare. And secondly, there is also a telephone list for all employees, which he manages. And he also wants to, be, he wants to notify his colleagues about changes to their telephone list. So let's switch to configurations again.
we choose notifications and we create a new notification. So we type in a name. We choose the file cabinet where the documents are which should be monitored. We want to notify about new documents and we define a rule and the rule is the document type document type needs to be equals to payslip. Then we switch to the message tab and we compose the email. So first the subject and second the message body. Then we enter a link to the document. In this case, we choose the field subject, and we add it, and we finalize the email with a salutation. Then we switch to the subscribers tab. And here we want that all new payslips should be sent only to the corresponding employee. So we choose field. And here we choose last name. The permissions tab, we just leave as it is. And we save the configuration. As already mentioned, Simon, Simon wants to create a second notification about the telephone list. So let's him, let, him, let us just watch how he does that. So he creates another notification gives the name, then chooses the file cabinet. In that case, it's in the document pool. We want to notify about new and changed documents. So we select both options. And after the change, we create the rule that the document type should be equals to telephone list. Then we switch to the message tab. Again, compose our message. First the subject, then the body. And again, we add a link. We choose the document date in this case. And we add it and finalize the message. And then we switch to the subscribers tab. And for this notification, we want everyone to receive this notification. So we choose user, select all, OK. Permissions, we leave as it is, and we save it. And now Simon goes back to the web client. So, payslips would normally be stored automatically, but for demo purposes, we do it manually. So, Simon stores a new payslip for his colleague, Brian Ford, from the production department. So, he keeps all, as we have already seen, all the employee records in a convenient folder structure. He navigates to Brian Ford's folder, and he chooses import and the payslip from April. The department is the production department, and we store the document. Next, Simon wants to edit the telephone list, which is stored in DocuWare. So for that, we open searches. We're in the document pool. We search for the type telephone, document type telephone list. We do a context click and edit. And remember, we have a new employee, so let's add Tiffany here. <laughs> we save the Excel and close it.
Okay, now we want to see how the users see these notifications. So let's switch, switch to Brian Ford. Brian checks his emails. So we go to Outlook. He got one notice about a new payslip. And hopefully soon, one about the changed telephone list. There you go. Of course, he wants to be notified about the payslip, and he opens it. So there you go. His payslip from April, everything seems fine. So he closes it again. He's also interested in the telephone list, but he doesn't actually always want to be notified about every change. So he just clicks on the unsubscribe link on the bottom of his email. Now it's automatically navigated to that spot and he just unchecks the unsubscribe button and that's it. So he will no longer receive emails about changes to this telephone list. So what is the benefit of this new configuration? I guess it's quite clear. Everyone can now create notifications and subscribe to them in an easy and intuitive way. Intu intuitive way. We provide a reduced and well-structured user interface. This lowers the hurdle for all types of users to conduct, conduct this simple configuration task by themselves. This applies to the previously shown uh, tray configuration as well as the notifications which you just saw. Let's sum it up what we have seen up to now. So with DocuWare version 6.11, you're now able to see out-of-office info when sending your requests. Thus, you can make sure that your process is not blocked by a person who is currently on a sabbatical. DocuWare Forms has become even more powerful. Attachments can be added to forms in a, even more in, the, in a flexible way. You can conveniently use forms on mobile devices and it's now possible for all users to easily set up document trays and notifications. In the next part of our presentation, we want to show you improvements we made in respect to email handling. So let's switch to the user Brian Ford again. Brian wants that all emails from a specific folder are archived. So the watched folder contains subfolders. Each subfolder represents a project he's working on. So there he already has two of his projects. So the subfolders are named with the project name. Brian doesn't really want to change his way of working with emails completely. So he searches for a way to store all his emails securely in DocuWare. And for this reason, he creates a new configuration for Connect to Outlook. He starts by doing a right click on his project folder and choosing Watch with DocuWare. So the selected folder is already pre-filled. Let's give, first give it a name. Then we also want to include subfolders. Um, the import options we don't touch. We just leave them as they are. And the store targets, so where should these emails end up? They should, they should be stored in the FileCabinet document pool. We also leave that. And then we switch to the most interesting part, to the indexing. So the company, yeah. So the document type, first of all, um, we pull from the email property 
which you find under more and direction. So with this email property direction, we store whether it's an incoming or outgoing email. The document date, we pull from the email property received date and time. The project, we choose from the, we fill with the email property folder name, or yeah, folder name, right. And email, we fill with the email address, with the email property correspondent email. So with that email property correspondent email, we automatically determine the email address of your email contact for either incoming or outgoing messages. Then we switch to the permissions tab or the subject we are still missing. We fill that with the email property subject. Then on the permissions tab, we set the use checkbox and we say save. Confirm that and we go back to Outlook. So now there in his project folders, he creates a new folder with the name Raptor. That's the name of his latest project. And then he refreshes the configuration. So in the DocuWare ribbon, we actually have to tell Connect to Outlook to now use this configuration. So we say use. And this message you just saw is particularly helpful if, for example, some other person in the organization created the configuration for you. Thus, thus you're notified that there is a new configuration and it lets you decide if you want to use it or not. Now, just having finished this configuration process, he already has the first emails for his project Raptor. So there is two emails, one from Patrick Summers and one from Haley Iceberg. So he marks the emails and drags and drops them to the folder Raptor. You see the notification on the bottom right, so the emails are automatically stored in DocuWare and assigned to the project. Brian also received some email from a business partner with two attached files. Um, he wants to store these, these two files with different index data. First, it's a cut drawing, and the other is a change request. And he can now store these attachments individually by right-clicking on them and choosing Store in DocuWare. So it just fills the document type, which in this case was the cut file, and the project is Raptor. And he presses store. Then he chooses the change request, also store in DocuWare. And the project again, Project Raptor. Now let's go to the web client. And do a search for the Project Raptor. And as usual, all the files are stored in DocuWare and assembled within one project folder here. Okay. Let's switch to the slides. As you have seen, email attachments can be stored with different index criteria or even with different dialogues or file cabinets. Additionally, watched folders can monitor subfolders Additionally, you can, you can watch folders and even subfolders and use their names as index data.
Next, I want to talk about mobile collaboration and workflows. Both topics are crucial for enterprise applications nowadays. People want to take part in business processes, not only when they are in the office, but also when they are on the go. Well-defined business processes are a competitive advantage, and they are modeled into workflows. DocuWare provides an easy-to-use mobile app and a powerful and flexible workflow manager that gives you even more possibilities to model your processes. We want to show you some of the features we added here. So let's start with mobile. So I'm in the role of Brian Ford, and he is using mobile. Let me just share it. So Brian is currently on, on a construction site, and he checks his emails with, uh, with his iPhone. And he received one notification about a, a new payslip and an invoice to approve. So he taps on that invoice. Brian has Docuber Mobile installed. And now let me just click on that link. And let's see what happens. At least I hope that someone happens, something happens. So as you can see, document links are now open directly in Docuware Mobile. So this works for any links to documents, no matter if they, the link was produced by a notification, a link someone copy-pasted manually into an email, or links to documents which are part of a workflow. So this works out of the box as soon as you have Docuware Mobile installed. Before actually approving the invoice, he wants to check the correct delivery of the goods and compare them with the delivery note. He's on site anyway, so no problem. So he has checked the delivery, the delivery is okay, and he can now continue scanning the proof of delivery, and he wants to attach it directly to the invoice. So he chooses the clip symbol on the bottom right, and he can now choose from, he can now attach documents from different sources. So either from the camera roll, he can either pick a file, which he has on his phone or in other apps, and of course he can also use paper scan. So we want to use paper scan. So it's pulling up paper scan now, switching to the app, and We scan the proof of delivery. So there it is. We say done. Then we say clip. I navigate to the second file, which is the proof of delivery. And then I continue approving this invoice by choosing the stamp button I say approve the amount is also okay let me reposition the stamp and then I say done and the task is completed and now Peggy Jenkins from the finance department can continue processing the invoice without any delay. So let's move back to the office to Peggy Jenkins. Peggy must pay the invoice that was just approved by Brian Ford. And there it is, directly in her task list and also the scanned proof of delivery is there. So now looking at her tasks on the bottom, 
you can see that workflow forms can now also contain instructions of what exactly to do with this task. And it's also possible, um, it's also possible to add links to this description and even more to pass data with this link. So Peggy clicks on the link and a booking proposal is generated with the data from the workflow task automatically in her ERP. So she doesn't have to retype everything again, but she just hits submit. And this makes the integration of DocuWare into other applications even more powerful. So after successful booking, the invoice in the ERP, she confirms the task and the process is done. It's that easy. So with DocuWare 6.11, it's now possible to open links directly in DocuWare Mobile. This improves the usability of documents on mobile devices. It's possible to append pages to documents which you scanned with paper scan or which come from a different document source, for example, your Dropbox or OneDrive. Further meaningful use cases are covered with this feature. Workflow forms can now contain simple text to give the user more guidance on what to do with the task. And it can contain links to several to external systems and even pass data along. This is for user guidance while processing a document and for deep integrations with external systems. So on top of the things we have we have showed you, Docker version 6.11 is full of further improvements in respect to the user interface and design of the product. Over 60 improvements were added, some smaller, some larger, all to enable our customers to use DocuWare in an even more efficient way. So all that is left for me to say is thanks to Stefan for supporting me with the presentation. We hope that you really share our enthusiasm about this new version. In case you have any questions, we will be, we will be around for the next two days. And enjoy DocuWorld. Thanks very much. <laughs>